China is set to revolutionize lunar exploration with two major upcoming missions that could change the way we approach space forever. The Chang'e 7 mission, launching in 2026, will focus on exploring the moon's south pole, a region rich in untapped resources. Following that, Chang'e 8 will test groundbreaking technologies to harness lunar materials for sustainable exploration. These missions are just the beginning, laying the foundation for an international lunar research station ILRS that could one day support permanent human presence on the moon. Let's start with the two stars of the show, Chang E7 and Chang E8. These aren't just any regular space missions. Chang E7, slated for launch in 2026, will focus on one of the most exciting and scientifically rich regions of the moon, the South Pole. This region has long fascinated scientists because of the potential resources it holds, including water ice. The Chang E7 mission will study the environment and resources of the South Pole laying the groundwork for future exploration and possibly human habitation. But how exactly will they do this? The mission will deploy a range of instruments, including rovers and possibly even a mini flying probe to map the area and study its geological composition. The presence of water ice is crucial not just for sustaining life, but also as a source of fuel for future missions. Following closely behind is Chang E8, which is expected to launch around 2028. If Chang E7 is the pathfinder, then Chang E8 is the architect. Its primary mission will be to test technologies that are essential for long-term lunar habitation, particularly in situ resource utilization, a fancy term for using the moon's resources to support human activities. This could mean everything from mining materials to build habitats to producing oxygen for astronauts. In situ resource utilization is the cornerstone for sustainable space exploration and it's what will allow us to create permanent outposts on the moon without relying entirely on Earth for supplies. These missions aren't just stepping stones, they are the foundation for the International Lunar Research Station ILRS, which we'll explore further in the next section. The Chang'e missions represent an incredibly calculated approach to lunar exploration. Each step builds on the last, moving us closer to the ultimate goal of a permanent presence on the moon. With Chang'e 7 surveying resources and Chang'e 8 testing technologies, China is carefully crafting the infrastructure needed for long-term exploration. These missions are much more than data collection exercises they are preparing the moon to become a second home for humanity. Now let's talk about the International Lunar Research Station, ILRS. This is where the real magic happens. The ILRS is a joint initiative by China and Russia to establish a permanent base on the moon, primarily at the lunar south pole. The plan is split into two phases, and it's one of the most ambitious lunar projects we've ever seen. The first phase, expected to be completed by 2035, involves constructing a basic station model that will operate within a 100-kilometer radius. This station will allow for continuous scientific research with robotic and possibly human explorers conducting long-term studies on the moon's surface. The station will also be equipped with an integrated Earth-Moon communication system, allowing missions to be interconnected and interoperable. So what's special about this first phase? It's not just a scientific outpost. The station will form the backbone for future lunar missions, both manned and unmanned. It will serve as a hub for global space exploration with potential for collaborations from around the world. Countries like Russia, Venezuela, and even Senegal have already joined the initiative, contributing to what is shaping up to be a truly international effort. By setting up this station, China and its partners are essentially building the infrastructure for all future lunar missions, providing a centralized base from which other countries and companies can operate. And that brings us to the second phase, which is even more ambitious. By 2050, the plan is to expand the station's capabilities to create a comprehensive lunar network. This will include exploration nodes at the lunar equator, and even the far side of the moon think of it as a sprawling research complex that spans different regions of the moon. With a lunar orbital station acting as the central hub, this network will support both unmanned and manned missions, operating continuously to push the boundaries of what we know about the moon. The scale of this project is unprecedented, and it will fundamentally change how we approach lunar exploration in the future. The ILRS is not just a technological feat, 
it's also a symbol of global cooperation. China's lunar program has attracted a diverse set of international partners with over 10 countries and more than 40 organizations involved. This level of cooperation is crucial, as the challenges of building a sustainable presence on the moon are too great for any one nation to tackle alone. Countries like Pakistan, Kazakhstan, and even South Africa have joined the ILRS initiative, bringing with them unique expertise and resources. But it's not just governments getting involved. Private companies and research institutions are also playing a key role. For example, Nanospace, a Swiss company, and Thales Group from France are contributing their cutting-edge technologies to the project. One of the most exciting innovations coming out of this collaboration is the plan to create a wireless network on the moon. Yes, you heard that right. There will be wireless networks on the moon, this is crucial for enabling interconnectivity between various missions from robotic explorers to human landings. Wireless communication will allow for real-time data sharing and coordination between Earth and the lunar base, making missions more efficient and safer. But it doesn't stop there. The Chang'e 8 mission will also explore the feasibility of growing food on the moon, a key component for long-term human habitation. Scientists are looking into ways to grow vegetables in the harsh lunar environment, which could one day make the moon self-sufficient for human explorers. This level of technological innovation, combined with international collaboration, makes the ILRS a game-changer in space exploration. It's not just about planting a flag or collecting rocks anymore. This is about building a sustainable future on the moon, one that involves countries and companies from all over the world. By pooling resources and expertise, the ILRS is setting the stage for the next great leap in space exploration, and the possibilities are truly endless. As we've seen, China's upcoming Chang'e missions and the International Lunar Research Station represent a monumental shift in how we approach lunar exploration. These missions aren't just about gathering data. They're laying the groundwork for a future where humans can live and work on the moon. By focusing on in-situ resource utilization, wireless communication, and international collaboration, China is paving the way for sustainable exploration not just on the moon, but eventually on other celestial bodies as well. The partnerships being formed today will shape the way we explore space for generations to come. And while the ILRS may be years away from completion, the steps being taken now are crucial for turning this vision into a reality. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more updates on space exploration and scientific discoveries. And don't forget to leave a comment down below. We would love to hear it from you. See you next time.